Greetings, my name is Mr. Jesus Lopez Ledesma. I do all my media work under uh, Jesse Ledesma. This is my video essay today. I'm going to try to keep it brief, 10 minutes, otherwise it won't work. Um, the basic point that I wanted to make is that, um, well, there's a lot of points, but I want to begin with, uh, if you're going to have an honest conversation about mental health uh, in America or anywhere else, you first have to start with who is the patient and I won't use the business language which is um, which seems to be the norm in the mental health profession you don't have patients you have clients and the reason is that you're it's like anything else if you're selling insurance or if you're a lawyer you have clients you're selling them a service and the service that you're selling them is a um, mental health service trying to get them to feel better and, and have a better life. The first thing that I would have to say is that we who suffer from mental health issues have a great responsibility and the responsibility is not to succumb to the uh, influences of our challenges. Um, it, it is obvious that this video essay is motivated by the events in Tucson, Arizona uh, with that young individual who <sighs> Who, who destroyed life there's no better way to put it and even uh, destroyed uh, very tender and and innocent and young life um, we see a, a very extreme disparity between the nine-year-old girl who lost her life and the 20-something young man who who for his own reasons uh, acted in the way that he did but the conversation has to start with us whether we have depression whether we have uh, uh, bipolar whether we're AD attention deficit disorder uh, whatever the case may be we have the greatest responsibility to control our own behavior and to not let our mental health challenges uh, overwhelm us uh, control us and cause us to attack society and attack ourselves um, I've done a lot of writing and through that writing I've come to some very um, distinct um, conclusions that have a lot to do with how accepting the reality of what we're going through is, is therapeutic and it's healthy and it's helpful. Um, I also talked a lot about how we cannot utilize these, the practices of negativity that is just going to compound our situation. It is better to be positive look at um, look at things realistically and see how we can manage our emotions and manage our rambling thoughts and manage our pain and suffering and talk ourselves up inspire ourselves to feel good about our lives and be grateful for what we have and not be a burden to society and not be a and not be a predator on society now a lot of things have been said. I, I wrote a simple um, behavioral analysis of Mr. Uh, Loughner, I believe is his name, Jerry Lee Loughner. And there's a lot of people who are quick to judge that the man was mentally insane. Um, when you are not, uh, when you have not studied formally, and, when, and let me, let me uh, qualify that. Um, in my opinion, you at least have to have a bachelor's in psychology um, or a four-year undergraduate, undergraduate degree in psychology to have a fair understanding of human behavior and human psychology and the motivations and, and things that influence behavior. When you don't have that, you're subjected to the common conversation and a lot, and it's understandable that a lot of people who don't have formal training in psychology and mental health issues would come to certain conclusions. I'm concerned about the mental health professionals, um, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, the behaviorists, the licensed professional counselors who are being interviewed by news services and are using language like crazy and insane, never having interviewed the person. There's a person on Fox News. Um, I think it's Fox News Live that I was watching that's a 
a professional who, who does what is called forensic psychology and when you're when you don't have access to the client the person with the mental health issue what you do is you evaluate the life and you evaluate the behavior and you look at things like uh, relationships and comments that people make about the individual however this person is, is using the language of schizophrenia and I would hope that the individual has at least a, a a psychiatry, an MD uh, in psychiatry, or a PhD in psychology, but schizophrenia has many different. Uh, uh, it's multidimensional. Uh, the three basic things about schizophrenia is that you see things that are not there. You have a uh, visual hallucination, uh, hallucination, and you have you hear things that are not there, uh, and that's auditory hallucinations. And you also have erratic behaviors. And by erratic behaviors, I don't mean going to a mall and shooting people. Um, muscle flinches, eye ticks, um, trolling your hair nervously, um, and other forms of behaviors. And, and again, it's multidimensional. That's just a rudimentary of the three basic things that I would like to see before uh, I would qualify anybody or assess somebody to be schizophrenic in that category. Because schizophrenia has at least uh, at least seven to eight um, different categories. So my concern is that we really don't understand mental health and we see somebody's behavior and we think, well, that person's crazy. And realistically, that's unfair because one of the things that, that happened uh, was that a lot of people are talking about, well, how do we, as individuals who don't want to be victimized, deal with individuals who have mental health issues? Uh, in the United States of America, there's a law called uh, HIPAA, and I believe it's the... the Healthcare Information uh, Portability Protection Act. No one uh, in a medical facility or in any facility that deals with medical information can talk about your medical status. Uh, I've spoken about this before. I used to work for a hospital as a security guard, and that's where I met the person that I consider to be my, um, the greatest person ever. And she was telling me about a, because we had to have, they got in trouble, <laughs> I'm going to mention them by name, but they got in trouble and the government, the federal government required that they had ethics training at all levels of, of, uh, uh, of employment. So you would go to these meetings and you would discuss issues like, if you are a lab person and you come across results that indicate uh, HIV, um, but that's not the reason the person is there should you tell that person within the business structure within the legal structures you cannot tell the person if I'm a patient I go into the hospital the doctor's going to perform a procedure whatever it's going to be and in the um, in the overall uh, uh, interaction with that facility my blood is drawn and tested and HIV I'm found to be HIV positive and I'm not <laughs> let me go ahead and say I am not HIV positive but I am found to be HIV positive. No one can tell me. The person who drew the blood, the person who tested the blood, uh, the director, the manager, the nurse, they know for their own protection. But they cannot tell me. If I am there for that purpose, then my doctor will come and say, we tested your blood and you came out positive for HIV. And the reason being is that you're protected. Um, the last security assignment that I had um, I was guarding people who had been in the news media. When I was sitting down with friends, I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't say, oh, well, I guarded that person, and this is this, this is and this are the details of the case. That's protecting the person. Even today, right now, doing this video essay, I have to be very careful not to give too many details about what actually happened, because anybody who would watch the news would say, oh, I remember that person, and I am violating that person's uh, privacy, and that's the big issue. So if we're going to start testing people, and I'm realizing now that this is going to be impossible to keep it in 10 minutes, maybe after the two video essays. But the point being is that you, you deserve your privacy. The state cannot force medical procedures on you. Uh, one of the things with uh, Obamacare is that's a big issue that nobody's talking about. Government forcing medical procedures on people. The government cannot force you to take medication. In mental health issues, there's people who need to be on medication, won't take their medication. The government cannot force feed them 
inject them against their will because that's your protection, that's your right. Um, we cannot tattoo people on the forehead, you know, uh, with PTSD or bipolar or whatever mental health issue. Um, because it's morally wrong. If you make an application and you put your social security number on that application, when that individual does a background check, your mental health status should not come up. That is protecting you. Your criminal behavior will come up, and if you're a person with mental health issues who have committed crimes, when you make an employment application and the person does the background check, your criminal behavior will come up. <sighs> institutions. The next point I want to make about this is institutions. Uh, privacy, I've spoken about privacy, the responsibility of the person with the mental health issues, and and uh, now institutions. I, I, uh, the hospital that I worked for was a private hospital, seven and a half years, as a security guard, where it would, did not deal with uh, mental health issues. It's a private hospital that did not have uh, a mental health ward. The county hospital, El Paso County Hospital, which I believe now is called University Medical Center, does deal with mental health issues. Um, and my capacity was medical warrants. If you claim to a law enforcement officer that you're suicidal, that officer is obligated by law to place you under a medical warrant, which results in a mental health evaluation. And I would come in and sit with you and make sure that you were not attempting to, to finish what you started. I have no confidence in institutions. They're not... Um, you know, they're obstacles to treatment and they're not facilitators of, of treatment. You, you are stuck in a quagmire. You're, you're, you're lost in limbo. To get proper mental health treatment in an institution, and I know I shouldn't paint with a broad brush, but the reality is that a lot of people there who are there are not qualified to be there. Um, those who are qualified to be there suffer from a poor attitude and have the typical negative um, attitude against people with mental health issues. You need somebody who, who's there, who's a professional, who's respectful, and who's willing to use the paradigms of, of mental health treatment to help the individual. So if you're gonna put somebody in an institution for treatment, you have to be confident the person is gonna get credible treatment. I, I, whether it be the El Paso Psychiatric Center that is run by the state of Texas, I would say no. There's a debate in the news right now. Um, there's a private mental health facility that is upset because the city of El Paso has decided to stop funding them. And the city of El Paso is saying, well, it is really a county issue, and the county of El Paso is the one that has to fund this facility. And they're right. One of the points that, that when this issue is being debated, there is a perverse relationship between insurance, whether it's insurances are public or private, and facilities that result in the high cost of services. Um, there doesn't, doesn't need to be, um, doesn't need to cost that much money. Uh, the reality you're going to deal with is when you're dealing, when you're saying, well, what are we going to do? How can we prevent these things from happening? You're going to have to run into individuals. You're going to run into straight into individuals who cannot pay for mental health treatment. And what are you going to do then? You're going to force them into a government program. You're going to violate their rights. Um, it is not a crime to be uh, to have mental health issues. I would not want it to be a crime. I think that again, it is the manner in which we approach life how we see things, our perspective, our philosophy, our attitude, even our mood, has a lot to do with how we deal with the challenges that present us in life. The individual in Tucson, I don't think was what you would call a uh, foaming at the mouth lunatic. I think he was, was a critical thinker, planner, individual with a particular personality type, the type that you would the personality type like uh, a Dahmer or a Ted Bundy or a alphabet killer who for whatever reason understands things differently 
and behaves under those assumptions that he, and perceptions that he has made about life. The end result are the tragedies that we all saw in Tucson. And nothing to do with politics. I've written over 500 articles, posted them on the internet. I'm a diehard conservative, have nothing to do with liberals. I think that they're wrong in, in the majority of their perceptions. Uh, I was watching, I'm going to go ahead and close. I was watching a program on Haiti, and one of the individuals said, uh, a, a citizen of Haiti said, we need to stop making our people weak and dependent on government because they become lazy and they stop working and they stop producing. And I think that's that's the the approach of the liberals does that. It makes people weak and unmotivated and they stop working for themselves. Now, this is an honest conversation on mental health. We can help people. We, we have we have the wisdom we have the rudimentary materials as far as uh, medications are concerned what we don't have is the proper healthy attitude to deal with the issue and the way the issue needs to be dealt with and we have system of government and private industry that it's more about greed and lust for money than actual therapy and that's where you lose but the other I have to close with this we are the ones who are responsible for our mental health whether it be depression whether it be anxiety whether it be rage anger um, delusions dementia whatever it is we are responsible and there's a healthy approach I've written a lot about the healthy approach accepting it being realistic um, Organizing your thoughts and emotions, recognizing the challenge and putting things in order and and not uh, being a burden to the people around you. I don't think we'll ever get, in my life, I'm 45 years old, I don't think I'll see a time in history, in future history I should say, where we'll actually be mature about what we're dealing with in the mental health issues where we'll have facilities that concentrate on care and not necessarily cost. I'm not a proponent of government health care. I think it's the wrong idea. We should take responsibility for ourselves. Um, I think that you can have low cost uh, treatment for people who can't afford it, but they still have to pay something, whether it's $5 a week or $10 a month. I don't think you do you help anybody by giving them free service. But that's, the, that's where I would say the issue lies. You gotta, you gotta, we who have mental health issues have to be grown up and have to be quality managers of our own behavior and our own challenges. Um, government should not invade the privacy nor force medical treatment on people. Uh, institutions that exist are not productive institutions, they're not functional institutions, do not provide real care. And the attitude of society needs to change. Those are my four points. We need to be. We need to stop stereotyping. We need to stop pointing fingers and laughing at people and making people feel worse because of their challenges. We need to grow up. Um, initially, I didn't speak about is security, but we need to be smart. You know, we can do everything that we think needs to be done. There's still going to be a tragic event. So we need to be smart about where we are, what we're doing and what resources we have to defend ourselves. Uh, thank you for listening and I wish you well.